So, um, so for someone who knows nothing about the Unity Bridge, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you came up with the idea and what well, it means? The Unity Bridge, uh, I was divorced. My wife got my home and I had a river. This bridge went over the river to our barn and the other kind of property. So I got, she got the house, I got the bridge. I um, put it in my rest, moved to my restaurant, put it in the garden and set it on the ground with no wheels on it so that um, people could get married on it. There's a unity bridge. Holy, holy matrimony, weddings, take pictures. Well, after about three months, and it just got started, the city came over and said, it's an illegal bridge, move it immediately. And I said, what, what are you talking about? It's a garden ornament. And then um, the next day they came and served me with papers and said, it's an illegal bridge. We went to court. They, they said that um, people could die if they took pictures on the bridge and walked across it because the zoning department doesn't have the proper zoning for having a bridge in a garden. There's no body of water. And uh, they said that um, it didn't have site plan approval. So I, I, was, I was just like overwhelmed. They told the judge my story and I had the horse and I had the bridge. And uh, the judge said, well, the city doesn't want it. Remove it immediately within, four, immediately within 48 hours or they can do whatever they want with it. So then about a week later, um, the Pope came out and said, Trump needs to be building bridges, not walls. And the media was constantly pounding it. Oh, Trump thinks he's going to be president. Ha, ha, ha. He's got to beat 17 um, political giants that have been experienced in politics, and politics for their whole lives and have their, their career politicians. They know what's going on. And so, yeah, I don't think they're as smart as they, as they think they are. So I said, I'm going to get behind President Trump because I like his agenda. He's right on target with what needs to happen and how people need to grow up. And I woke. I, I just said, you know what? I'm going to make it the Trump Unity Bridge. I'm on a mission from God um, by orders of the by inspiration by Pope Francis to build bridges, not walls. And I'm going to build the Trump Unity Bridge um, and make America get President Trump elected. And then everyone was asking me, well, once he's elected, what are you going to do? Well, I said the message is on here. What Trump's message is. When I'm finished with this, I'm going to gather. While I'm doing this, between now and the inauguration, I'm going to gather messages from the people of America from all 50 states and ask them what they would do to tell a president to make America a better place. And I did. And this is a consensus of what everyone would like to make America a better place. So, from all lives matter, unity, equality. American culture, our constitution, drain the swamp. You have politicians that do what the people want, not what their pocketbooks want. The, you know, so, so those are the kinds of things that we did. And um, uh, preserve our constitution, preserve the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, things like that. So that's how it came about. And that's what the pur general purpose of it is. Our, and then, then we started our tours. Now we're on the Build the Wall tour. Our, this is the third leg of our National Build the Wall Tour. The first one went in February from Detroit to Connecticut, down to Florida, Key West, the whole state of Florida for about three weeks, then over to California, back to Florida, up to um, Georgia, Tennessee, and Michigan. And then we um, took a break for a few days and then did little things in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio for two or three day, day, day or two trips. And then the second leg was to the 4th of July event in um, Washington, D.C., which was amazing. And we went um, over just stri straight to D.C., um, did some pit stops in Indiana, um, Ohio, uh, West Virginia, and then on the way back we did some pit stops in uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio, then came back to Detroit. And then now we're on our third leg of our tour, which was Detroit, uh, Chicago, Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Sturgis, South Dakota. I'm just naming some of the big cities. We stopped at many in between. Uh, Gillette, Wyoming, Salt Lake City, Reno, Nevada, Lake Tahoe, um, Sacramento, Pismo Beach in California was big at Sacramento, Pismo Beach, um, Malibu, um, Santa Monica Pier. Then we, they shut down part of Hollywood Boulevard for us right in front of the Man's Chinese Theater in front of Donald Trump's star. Um, we continued on through uh, Manhattan Beach, Long Beach, Newport Beach, then over to La Quinta, Palm Springs, 
um, Coachella, um, and then now we're then we went to um, right, um, and we're, we're, we're here in Amarillo, Texas. But yesterday we were in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we stopped somewhere else. We stopped a bunch of times in between everywhere, but uh, people call us and ask us to do pit stops and sometimes. It's, at a, uh, a Love's Travel Station or a TA or a Walmart parking lot, and a Harley Davidson dealer. And we just um, make pit stops. And every Harley dealer we stop at in, in America, we grab one of these little poker chips from them, we call it a poker run, um, just to show that we've been there to support products made in America by Americans. And if you look about the float, you'll see the Drain the Hot Swamp Harley up there. And the Drain the Swamp Harley has an alligator seat, an alligator mirror, the alligator foot pegs. Alligator kickstand, and then it um, has a picture of him, in custom the painted the alligator on the actual <laughs> gas tank. It's pretty cool. So, uh, what kind of response have you got from all these places you've been going? You know, you hear about the the swing states, and it sounds like you've been through many. So, what kind of response are you getting? The, the whole country. We're getting more. I'd say we're getting a 90% positive response and less than one, less than a half a percent um, uneducated, violent gesture, inappropriate, inappropriate gesture response. Less than less than one percent. And um, the people that are truly Democrats, that just vote Democrat their whole life, are becoming educated because the news is telling them. For, for, since President Trump is Donald Trump ran for president, the news has been telling the Democrats one storyline. Okay, oh, he, he's, he can't be elected. There's no way he'll be elected. Donald Trump will not be president. Write this in the books. All these different things. He will not be president. There's no way he can win. Impossible. They fixed the they fixed the election. They rigged the election. They cheated. They they, they even got caught cheating. They they did the Russian collusion thing, which was a big fake dossier and, 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 and a conspiracy throughout the Obama administration appointees. And they tell them all this stuff, and the Democrats and the non-Trump supporters are saying, wait a minute, everything that they said was going to put Trump and impeach him and put him in jail has been a lie. It's not true. And that they're saying, you know, we've been bamboozled, we've been screwed over, we've been lied to. And I'm finding more people leaving. I've been a Democrat my whole life, and I'm, I'm voting for Trump. I have union leaders from the United Auto Workers Association, former president of the union, the Carpenters Union in Detroit, um, different unions coming and speaking on the float, telling their stories. So it's not what the media is portraying. They lied about all these other things, and every day they lie to us again. They put a, 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 a spin of what they would like to have happen what they would like to see in their news reporting, and then um, everybody finds out it's a lie. The best part about the media in America is when I go from town to town, I see meet the small town newspapers, the small town news channels, even in Hollywood, California, San Diego. I had a, a, a local news channel come to Calexico and videotape us. I gave my little speech, and when I gave the speech, I said, if anyone like free Trump 2020 stickers, come on over. And guess what happened? The, the immigration station that President Trump was at, all the shops and stores around there came out and got stickers, and I didn't have enough stickers in my in my car to hand them out. Three of us couldn't hand out stickers fast enough. I had to go in the back, pull out more, and give them to all of us because that many people came out. The Hispanics, the um, the everybody. The black, I even, there, there's black people, Hispanics, mixture. I don't even know what religions they were, but everybody came out. Everybody. They came out of the immigration office. They were in line. They got on the line, came over, got a sticker, and went back in. So that that's that's what's showing the people in like um, Yuma, Amarillo, um, uh, um, uh, Calexico, down in San Diego, down at the um, Friendship Park. We were down there. Uh, same great response from people. So all when we drove the we drove the border a couple times from uh, Texas to California, from California to Texas, and then we zigzagged through the states, hitting um, uh, Dallas, San Antonio. We went to um, the Alamo. Uh, we've been to you know, uh, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, when, when our car broke down and uh, we blew up the engine and. Um, 
not Amarillo. Um, it was in Texas, and it was um, Lawrence Hall Chevrolet. We pulled in there, and it's like we got towed in there. And uh, um, uh, Aberdeen, Texas, right? And uh, Lawrence Hall Chevrolet looked at it at four o'clock in the afternoon. They said your engine's blown. I said I, we need to be in San Antonio in the morning or Plexico tomorrow morning. And we had to leave in the morning, so we get to Plexico. There's no way. We'll do it as quick as we can. Their mechanics called and they said, the mechanics called me and uh, at 8 o'clock at night, asked me some questions about the wiring, because there's a lot of special wiring, heavy duty copper cables, so that the sound system can run and the video surveillance system and cameras and different things can operate on here properly. And uh, we actually went over there and uh, the, the mechanics volunteered on their own time to work all night. And the next day at three o'clock, less than 24 hours later, they called me and said, your car is ready to pick up. And we had a new engine in there. They called me in the morning, like at nine o'clock in the morning and said, you know, your engine mounts aren't broken or bad, but they're a little bit dry rotted. And they recommended some parts. And then when we left there, um, one of the staff members actually paid for a bunch of parts for us. So, and they told us we needed new tires. So we got new tires, they did a safety inspection. Mechanically, this was made in America, by America, this car, it sounded a rock. A couple hundred, that we've towed this bridge to 200,000 plus miles so far. And uh, as long as you take care of the product, made in America, by America, it's gonna last forever. Look at some of these old cars, the classic car shows. You know, there, there's some proof of it, you know what I mean? This is another proof of it. So let me ask you, um, so as a, so you're from Michigan, correct? Yep. So as a Michigan native, how likely is President Trump to win Michigan again in 2020? Absolutely. Um, we're doing the Auto Workers for Trump rally September 14th in uh, Sterling Heights, Michigan on Van Dyke Road. Uh, last one we had, we had over a thousand people show up, and I just get invited to it. I don't do it. The auto workers call me and say, can you make it here? And I said, yeah. So I scheduled the September 14th rally um, that we're going to be there. So um, we will be there at Sterling Heights, and I'm, I'm expecting, you know, a thousand, five thousand, maybe as many as five thousand auto workers. And like Trump said, the dues-sucking union leaders are telling the auto workers to say, you know, you got to vote. Democrat, you got to vote what we want. You know what I mean? And and the auto workers are saying, we haven't worked three shifts during the Obama, Clinton or Obama administration since since they ran it. Now we're working three shifts, seven days a week, and we're opening new plants. And we got a half million. We got a Detroit and Michigan's coming back. Um, so the people aren't stupid. They're not. You know, they're they're saying, yo, this is what's really happening. Trump made his decisions. Trump's doing what he said he's going to do. And Trump's got America back on track. And I think that President Trump is making all the right moves for longevity of America. Because whatever President Trump does, and this thing is going to last for a few years, when he wins, when he wins in a landslide victory in 2020, the work you're going to see a lot more Trump agenda. You're going to see a lot of the sw swamp leaving, quitting, jumping out. Because you know what's going to happen? They're going to get busted. If, if you put every Congressman, Democrat, Republican, every um, House representative, through the same test you put the Trump family through, what do you think would happen to Congress and the House? What do you think? Well, what I think, and what people told me is, half of them would be in jail, right? And then some of these radical Republicans to the far right, radical Democrats to the far left, I'm not saying it's one party, I'm saying it's some crooked politicians, and we need to drain them out of there, so that we can have what the people of America voted for, what the people of America want. And the proof is, here, here's some proof. I, I, give it, I have evidence and backup for everything that I say, so you can check out the facts and make your own decision. ABC did their poll, you know, ABC, you know, leftist, liberal ABC, did their poll on President Trump's uh, State of the Union speech. And their poll, they probably had to be choking on the words when they had to say 76% of Americans approved President Trump's speech. They were probably choking and didn't know didn't know how to say it because that was the truth. All right. So if 76% of Americans, that means probably you, me, and probably everybody here, have most probably 75% of the people the car is driving by approved his message, even in the, even in the swing states because they poll everywhere. 
All right. So if 76% of Americans like, well, I don't like Donald Trump, but I like his message. So why didn't the Democrats in, the, in politics and the Congress work on what President Trump wanted? Or what, what President Trump said, what the people want? Why don't they do what the people want? They, they, they don't. They, what has the Democrats done since they've been in office? They've just stirred the pot and um, haven't done anything for the people. They, and they're asking for a raise. They're trying to get a raise through for themselves. Why do they need to pay themselves for it? They should all go, they want $15 an hour minimum wage. Congress and the House should go work for $15 an hour. I'm doing for less than that. I'm doing this for free. I'm doing this for my heart. I'm not working. I do this on my own. Money's and savings and anybody that wants to make a donation, if the people want to donate and support me supporting your messages, the people's messages, to get people educated so they can make their own choices based on common sense and reality and truth, then keep supporting me. If you don't want it, then don't give me a dime and I'll do the best I can. But that's what America is about. It's about free speech, free religion, um, educating people. I want no harm for anybody. If somebody commits a crime, I want them to pay their price. You know, if they raped or murdered or killed somebody or gave some kid drugs or did something illegal or immoral, they should go to jail and pay their crime. If they're here illegally, they should be removed from our country. We, don't, we shouldn't be paying for them to live here because they're a criminal. I don't get nothing from my government. Do you get anything from the government? So hopefully you earn everything you get and you have a good life. I earn everything that I get and I have a good life. You know, I had a lot more money years ago when I had my businesses running. The city shut me down. I don't have my business anymore. I'm living off some savings and, you know, some little few things that came in here and there. But but the bottom line is, is that I'm really happy because I, I get to meet patriots. I get to change people's lives for the better. I get to tell people, you know what, when people are coming at me, I, at a dead speed, they disagree with me. I like to talk to them, um, have some debate, and walk away shaking hands and bring on some things that we could work on and say, you know what, forget all the negativity. Um, let's, here's a few things that are positive. That, what do you like? Well, let's focus on that. Let's call our, you call your Congress, you call your councilman, you call your House Senator, stuff like that, and you make a difference. Don't just come out and yell at some guy that likes Trump or some lady. That's not going to do anybody any good. If you want to make a difference, fight for something positive. And now, and when you think about it, there's over six million people that came off government assistance and government food stamps in America. Over six million of them. I run into them all the time in these swing states. So you ask me the question of what happens in these swing states with Democrats and stuff like that. I go into um, Hispanic, African American communities, downtown inner city communities, where there's a mixture of, it's like a melting pot of all, all races and breeds and um, men, women, gays, whatever, a little bit of everything, all right? And I have people coming up to me that I'm shocked. They'll give me a donation or they'll come over and take a sticker, but they'll tell me that, yeah, we, I, I got a job now. I'm not on government assistance. I said, well, congratulations. And, and, and the story is they would get 1000 thousand, fifteen hundred 1500 bucks a month from the government, all right? Now they're all making two or three thousand a, a month and they're having a social they have a sense of achievement because they're completing a job they're uh, making more money than they made in the government and they're taking home more than they made from the government and and they're accomplishing something and the best part about it is they're paying taxes so they're contributing back to the system where they took from and you know that now they can go out to a movie they can put gas in their car they have a job they can buy a car they can do their they can live their own life where you know even even if they're on poverty making, you know, under, under the amount, they're still making better than they were making on the government assistance program. And that's what I hear from very, very hundreds and hundreds of people across the country. Even in California, we got honks all the way up and down, uh, around everywhere. The outskirts of Hollywood, uh, verbal abuse, downtown Hollywood, basically no problem whatsoever. Um, we had thousands of people there. Um, the police were there. We're at Donald Trump's star for about two and a half hours. Uh, people came by. One guy spit on a Trump reporter. He got arrested. That was it. The only thing that happened. A, tr a Trump supporter, yeah. So um, out of maybe eight, ten thousand 10,000 people, that was it. And we had the whole Trump Unity Bridge lit up. And we stayed there at dusk through dark. 
and it lit up the red, white, and blue. We played the music. We gave speeches. Um, it, it was fine. There's about there's about 15 to 20 of us that put on the event, and thousands participated. Well, I appreciate it. All right, thanks.